Hey guys, today we're going to finish off our unit with LT6. We're going to be looking at precious resources. Specifically, we're going to be looking at metal ores, and we're going to be looking at how they were formed in the earth and how we mine them out of our crust. So here we go. Let's take a look at a very common item uh, where we find metals. This is a phone, and you can see a phone is made out of mostly plastic and glass, but also the rest of it is actually all metal. These are all metal elements. Now, um, the question is, where do the metals we use come from? So let's look at these two words. An ore is a rock with, that contains minerals, minerals with useful elements. Ore deposits are clusters of ores found within rocks on the Earth's surface. There's usually enough of a mineral to make a profit. Now, um, ores are usually found everywhere, uh, but ore deposits are a little harder to find. A lot of times, um, metals are not clustered like this. They're kind of mixed in with the rock. And when we find uh, metals that are concentrated like this, then people will start to mine it or dig it out. Let's look at what the most abundant or the, the most common ores on Earth are. So these are easy to find and you can find plenty of them on the Earth. So first we have aluminum, used in aluminum cans. We have iron, and iron is used in many, many different things. Machines, here's a, a pan, an iron skillet actually. And magnesium is another metal. You can find it in fireworks. Uh, you can also find it in dietary supplements. Manganese, which is in our nickels, and titanium, which is a very hard metal used to reinforce a lot of products that you can see here. So these metals are very uh, easy to find and they're found in common rocks. On the flip side, let's look at the rarest ores on Earth. So these ores are not found very readily and there's um, very small amounts around the world, less than the abundant ores. So we have copper, we have lead, um, which is found in some uh, cell phones and other electronics. It's also very deadly to the body. Uh, zinc, which is a key part in uh, batteries, and gold and silver. Now let's talk about how these ores form. So if you think back to our rock unit, you guys remember that there's three types of rocks. There's igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Um, one of them is igneous rocks. And remember, igneous rocks are, are formed from the cooling of magma. So sometimes the magma will push out in a volcano like this, but some magma will actually push into rock and cool under the ground, and we call this intrusive igneous rock. Um, and sometimes when these things happen, this uh, igneous rock will cool very slowly and this will cause them to concentrate certain mineral ores and form metal ores. So that's the first way we can form metal ores. The second way is through what we call hydrothermal solution. Um, so hot water near vents, which are small openings in the Earth's crust or volcanoes, uh, dissolves minerals and then transports them to small crocks in the rock in the rock where the water cools and it forms ores with the dissolved minerals. Copper is an example of a metal that forms in this way. And this is what these diagrams are showing. The third way that metal ores can form is through sedimentary rock. So um, we call these sedimentary ores because they are usually found as um, uh, within sedimentary rock is a, a rock layer. Uh, when lake or seawater containing minerals evaporate, they leave behind valuable ores and sometimes they get preserved in these sedimentary rocks. And so iron halite, which is table salt, borax, which is a mineral found in soap, and gypsum, which is a mineral used in plaster, these um, minerals usually form in this way. Finally, we have what we call placer ore deposits. So uh, this type of ore forms when uh, there's water that weathers this 
like a mountain and when it's weathering the side of a mountain it will break away small pieces of rock that and dissolve some minerals from the rock or soil the water will travel down and kind of collect in the stream and deposit the minerals and some of these minerals are metals and so gold and aluminum are common common metals that are usually found in this way or made in this way and this is a picture of someone who's mining for gold you may have remembered in fourth or fifth grade you guys learned about the gold rush where in California where um, people flocked to California to try to pan out for the gold so now let's talk about where most ores are located so Today, most ores uh, we have mined are on what we call the continental crust, which is the outermost layer of the lithosphere, which you all remember is the part of the geosphere that is the outer layer and contains all the rocks of Earth. Um, scientists know that there are ores in the ocean and in the mantle, which is underneath the crust. However, we haven't really uh, developed the technology to be able to mine those metals yet. So now let's talk about how how do we know where to dig to find these metals? So geologists use several clues to figure out where to dig. The first one is plate tectonic movement. So they look at where the plate boundaries are, where the plates are pushing, what kind of rock formations are forming, um, what kind of rocks are around the plate tectonics, and they predict um, if they can find a certain metal, metal ore deposit there. They also study the ways that certain ores form in order to uh, predict where they might locate some metals. So for example, copper is usually found in places where there's magma. So they'll look around, um, you know, certain areas where there's magma flowing out. Um, or aluminum is usually found in weathered soil of tropical areas where there's humidity. So they might find some place in the, in the world where there's uh, humidity and weathered soil. Finally, uh, this is review, but remember when we talked about core sampling, where geologists will drill a hole in a certain area and study the profile of the rock and soils of that area to look and identify for minerals. Um, so they, they do do this not only for petroleum that we talked about earlier in the semester, but they also do it for minerals and rocks. So here's a picture of the core sample. Okay, so now let's talk about how do we get these, once we find the metals, how do we get them out of the ground? Uh, there's usually three techniques. The first one is surface mining. So we learned about this when we uh, were talking about uh, coal and trying to get coal out of the earth. It's, it's the same deal. So you blast away the surface rock to expose the ore underneath the surface of a certain rock. So this is surface mining. Placer mining is Basically, you're filtering out flakes of ores from the stream gravel, and this is a picture from the California Gold Rush, um, panning for gold. So basically, the metals are heavier than the soil, so they will sink to the bottom of a pan when you wash it with water, and you, it takes a really long time to filter out um, ores by hand like this. Uh, today, we use um, certain machines that help us do this. Finally, we have underground mining, which is... Uh, when miners will blast a hole inside a rock and form a tunnel to be able to extract ores from the walls inside of a cave. Okay, now we're going to talk about this process called extraction. So you may have noticed that when um, we dig out these ores, usually the metals are kind of stuck to the rock around it, you can see here. Um, and so we want to separate the metal from the rock, so we call this extraction. There's three different ways that this can be possible. The first one is called heat leaching. This is when uh, there's chemicals like cyanide are added to um, the ore to be able to separate the mineral from the rocks around it. So this is what this diagram is showing. And usually it flows into like a pond and you, you recover the metal. Um, flotation is kind of similar to heap leaching, except it's not using a mineral heap or a big pile of the mineral. Uh, usually, you add a chemical uh, to the you know the rock that will allow the metal to attach to you know it's a chemical reaction, so the metal will attach to uh, you know whatever chemicals in here and it will float to the top, and you can extract the the metal in that way. 
So that's what this diagram is showing. And the last one is called smelting. This is probably the way that um, you have you're most familiar with. So this is when you roast the rock and you roast it to such a high temperature that it melts and it will melt the, the metal that's in the rock and you can separate it um, from the rock itself. This is smelting. Finally, let's talk about the environmental impacts of mining for ores. So mining for ores usually degrades the land or destroys the land and it strips them away from valuable soil that is used by the producers of any ecosystem and it really destroys the ecosystem. So you can see here we use explosives to kind of dig these big holes so we can mine out the ore but it does leave a significant mark on the land and without the soil on top of here it will be really difficult for um, producers and other organisms to really use the land for their homes. Finally, let's talk about the environmental impacts of extracting ores. Remember that mining ores, so this one, mining is to dig the rocks out of the ground to, uh, for the metals. And extracting is when we separate the rock from the metal. So first of all, the minerals and ores are non-renewable. Uh, it takes a really long time, millions of years, for minerals to settle and to be um, treated with heat and pressure through the rock cycle and to form. And so once we dig them out of the ground and we start smelting them or we start using them, it's really difficult to um, recreate the ores if we don't recycle them. And this is why a lot of metals are recycled because it's really easy to melt them down and to reshape them again, unlike plastic. Um, Extracting metal from the ore requires tons of energy, around 900 degrees Celsius, and some, sometimes this energy is used by burning or is obtained from burning fossil fuels that may further damage the environment. Not always, but it does add to the uh, energy problem that we have. It's also, if you just recycle 40 aluminum cans, you will save the equivalent of one gallon of gasoline used to mine out aluminum. So again, it just reiterates the importance of recycling metals, aluminum, steel, um, instead of, you know, continuing to dig in the earth and to uh, ex uh, mine for metals because it does save a lot of energy to recycle.